possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTE GA podcast. Mikey Stafford here, I'm joined by Niall McCoy and Rory O'Neill, as always, from RTE. And in the latest of our series of interviews with people who'd rather go through the meat grinder that is inter county management than talk to us for another day, it's uh, the new Westmead football manager, Desi Dolan. How you doing, Desi? Great, Mikey. Always enjoy talking to you, Mikey. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. When you're in the All Ireland final next I, year, Desi, and you're I, saying I, there's no, there's a media ban, I'll hold you to that. Hey, what's the story with all these RT guys heading off? That's that's the question. What are you doing today? <laughs> 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 Everyone's starting to ask the question. Is it the podcast? That's all I want to. Know. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is, though, Desi, like we we get we get stick from pillar to post about the quality and content of our contributions from our pundits. And we've none left because they must, they must they must be doing something right if they're so yeah. popular with all these county boards, you know. The thing is, Desi, yeah. we, we, we pay too well all these these managers. They just want to go back to the volunteer spirit of the GAA, and that's why they're leaving Bunditry. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, Desi, but congratulations, first of all. Um, thank not you. not a thank complete su- not a complete surprise, but at the same time, when we when we look at kind of um, your own coaching career to date um i suppose a lot of people might say it is a surprise because i'll hold my hands up and say if, I, if i'm missing out on a school team here or a, a five-a-side team that you managed in a in a in a blitz or something you've never managed a team have you so you jesus desi you're you're going in at the top you managed absolutely the school. did you manage yeah, the school absolutely. you did manage the school ah, you? Well, you, you, i've managed the golf team i managed the football team i managed every team in the school but that's <laughs> um i suppose there's a lot there's lots to it in fairness guys i suppose one of the big things was i was playing until maybe last year so that was just something i did um i also getting involved getting involved last year with jack cooney i think i suppose i got on very well with the lads i realized i, I hadn't played since maybe 2014 inter-county and then getting back involved with westmead i probably realized that the, the enjoyment and the satisfaction I was getting involved with being in a team and the intercounty environment and getting stuck into it. And having the good year that we had with, with Jack and working with Jack and Jack as a mentor was very enjoyable. And I suppose I was surprised anyone when I got the news that Jack had to leave the job. Um, so I suppose the opportunity presented itself. The players were probably keen to have a bit of continuity. So I suppose I stepped up to the role as a result of that. But I, I'm kind of confident in so far as I have a lot of good people around me um in Westmead and I'm obviously best mates with John Kane for a very very long time and he's a great coach and experienced S and C guys are amazing and oh, the whole backroom team and I suppose that's really probably the reason I'm doing it is because the continuity is a big factor a couple of players maybe 30 31 32 and I think give them another opportunity to um go on push on seeking what we can achieve in Westmead yeah so the the backroom team then is going to be largely what it was last year with you stepping up is it because I know it, it the Westmead County Board said it's t- TBC but it's going to be largely the same setup you would hope I guess is it absolutely it, it will be largely the same setup at the same time I probably will be looking for a, another coach and just to add to it um so I'll be just the marketplace got pretty um I suppose swiped of a lot of good coaches when Mayo took Kevin McStay because he took the majority of them <laughs> but uh at the same time, I just think maybe we'll keep an eye out for a coach, a little bit of experience as well, something different and just a different voice as well to add to it because I suppose you just need variety. Like the one thing I know is back with management and management at inter-county level is like there's an expectation from players there and you have to be bringing different ideas to them, presenting to them. So definitely I'll be looking to add something in that regard. Well, you, well Desi, can you... Please not ring Kieran Whelan because we're we're running, <laughs> we're running low, right? So can you leave Whelan off? Because I know I know he has big connections down in West. He Canada. has, yeah, big, he is, big, he's, big he's connections. His wife, yeah, his wife and his family and all of that. So, but uh, so, but like, please, you know, we, yeah, yeah, we've lost enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Desi, you mentioned the, the Jack Cooney going and the, the surprise that it was, and obviously it, it was a job like it. Basically, his dream job came up and he, he kind of he couldn't not take it. But he was so well thought of. The Thousand Cup win obviously was huge. He's developed a very 
like as you say there's a few older heads in that team but there's some very talented young players coming through and you know jack's done obviously the, the heavy lift in there can you just give us an idea of the kind of the influence he's had on you in terms of of coaching and management and kind of whether his style of management is is kind of the one that you would kind of aspire to, I suppose. Well, I, su- I suppose the one thing Jack is very strong at is creating a culture and environment where lads can excel and enjoy themselves. And, and I think that's the real secret now to success in so far as you're trying to keep it a happy camp as much as possible because there's lots of stresses and strains on young lads nowadays. Um, I suppose Jack Cooney was involved with Westmead for such a long time. Like he was back selector when we won the Leinster in 2004. It's 2022 and he won the Talton Cup. It gives you... It gives you an idea of the length of time and service he's given to Westmead football. But uh, even on, on my, with myself, I played with Jack. And um, he just he just has a great way with him, great way with the players, great rapport. And he went off. He, 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 I suppose the announcement that he was leaving came as a massive shock to us. Um, he told us, I think he did an interview about March, April. Uh, probably maybe February, March, actually. And I think in April, I kind of said to him, if you get a job in Crow Park, is there not some technicality about not managing an inter-county team? And very quickly, he changed his subject because I think in his head, he thought that if there was any way possible he could hold on to the Westmead job, he would have because it meant a lot to him. But anything to do with sport, anything to do with football is his dream job. So he, he just happened to go to Crow Park and he, it's player development pathway. And that's something he's implemented in Westmead to success couple of players have graduated from that. So I certainly see him excelling in that role in Crow Park as well. But, but a great a great coach, a great mentor and a great fella. And, and I think I suppose the example is for me, like he gave so, so much to Westmead. The opportunity came up to, for me to maybe get involved. It's very hard to turn down your own county. Yeah. Um, and then I suppose the, the kind of issue at the moment, like we have a few counties outstanding and there are division one counties, which which makes it kind of more glaring, you know, Donegal, Monaghan, Roscommon. So there's kind of, there's a lot of chat at the moment about, you know, inter-county management. It's maybe for the likes of Jack O'Connor, you know, people who are retired, people who kind of maybe have, you know, kind of a, kind of a different kind of, maybe not a nine to five kind of Monday to Friday job. Um, you've got a pretty young family. You're a teacher. Um, you're not daunted by kind of the task ahead. No, not at all. Um, I, to be honest, I've always been extremely committed to football um, all through my life. And I suppose even to the fact that I played club football until maybe last year um, is testament to that. And it's the commitment of it. I think the environment of inter-county is what suits me. I enjoy, I enjoy going to train. I enjoy being first there. I enjoy being last to leave. I enjoy the company of the lads, the fun that you can have with them. Um, it's certainly <laughs> already I can see how it can be demanding because like, there's lots of good messages and support from all over the country now, to be honest. But at the same time, it's just uh, the level of interest probably is, is magnified a bit with inter-county management. And I suppose the responsibility then, time to put in, like going looking at players, trying to trying to seek out or a bit of extra talent in that, that's in Westmead is really important as well. And that's something I'd be looking to do. But to be honest, um, it's, it's too good an opportunity to pass. If, if someone comes knocking and they want you to train the county team and you're very into football and it's your passion, uh, I don't think you can just let it pass you, to be honest. Yeah. Um, the Towson Cup then, obviously, is probably one of the reasons, like, you know, the, the year was so good. Maybe that's how Jack Cooney got his job. And maybe that's why you've decided to stay on. And um, obviously, the, the upshot of that is there's a lot of positivity around Westmead football. And the other upshot, upshot of it is yeah. you're guaranteed a place in the, in the All-Ireland Series, which is, which is huge for, for, for a county like Westmead in the inaugural year of it to be going in with the status of Towson Cup champions and to be guaranteed a place in the round robin. Yeah, it was amazing. And I see already Oshin set his stall out like a Talton Cup would be a good thing for Wickley. And it gives, I think we were, we were fortunate last year. We were, we were the, the first winners of the Talton Cup. But I think the competition itself gave everybody a bit of light or a bit of an opportunity to go win some silverware. We had a massive day in Crow Park. We had massive support from Westmead supporters. We were lifting a trophy in Hogan stand. We, we knocked great crack out of it. We went back to Mullingar. It was as good as any, as good as any, we won the Leinster in 2000. It was as good as that. It was amazing scenes and a great lift for the county. And I, I just do think that it was a great competition um, for, for everyone in Division 3 and 4 because it's tangible and at the start of the year, you can set your soul out and aim for, for winning a trophy. Yeah. And have you, I guess it, 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 it um, increases the chance of uh, buy-in from your squad. Obviously, you know, 
Um, yeah. counties, kind of mid-ranking counties are often there. There's the risk of I'm off to Australia for a year or two, or that's just saying oh, I want to focus on club. I guess that's less likely for you this time round. Well, hopefully we can keep as many of the lads together as we can. Um, there's a team holiday coming up as well, and it's for, in preparation. Where are you for going? That, uh, they're going to Mexico, and I, and, and say it's good for the gym work because the lads are afraid to take their tops off. They're six weeks away, so they want to be going out there looking well. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, that's a bit of a boost but like you mentioned next year and and like the National League it's a very busy schedule I know you probably may touch on that with the league finals the league are, are kind of quash but like you're you're well see what happens this weekend but like the league is very very busy we played five weeks in a row last year it's very intense um, then you have a Leinster standalone Leinster competition and then you have this All-Ireland series with three games guaranteed so it is a hectic schedule for teams like um, it'll be enjoyable looking forward to playing the All-Ireland series uh, a game at home a game away and a neutral I think that's right not sure mm-hmm. but but at the same as time as it stands like, as it stands who knows yeah, as it stands. <laughs> but like you're looking there at the possibility of Division 1 team coming down to Mullingar for a, an All-Ireland series match it'll be a massive opportunity and something for us to build on and something for us to push on and enjoy and and certainly we'll be look forward to that as a as a great opportunity. Mm. You'll um you'll be looking for that bit of certainty on the fixture list as well after this weekend because the chopping <laughs> and changing. I know it's a bit bit away yet, but at the same time you probably are want to start planning and booking yeah, things and everything else. Absolutely. Well, pitches would be one thing for a starter. We don't have a train and pitch in West Me, but like I thought it was initially I heard on December fifteenth for a going back date. I'm looking at. November 24th was in an article this morning. That's probably the Colin Keels one, Rory, that you talked about in relation to a return to training. But, and I suppose they're probably maybe trying to do that to squeeze everything in to give county teams an opportunity to um, get a bit of training done before they're allowed to play challenge matches on the 1st of January. But it is hectic. Like I found last year that there's, there's actually no time for games to breed, even during the championship, even during to have a bit of debate and discussion because you're always looking to next weekend as well. Yeah. Uh, just um, in terms in terms of the family days, like yeah. uh, obviously your dad and Gary, w- will they have yeah. any involvement? Do you think, or wh- like, on how much would you lean on them? Or I mean, they've uh, all they've all got a fantastic football pedigree as well. I'm sure you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my dad trained Longford with uh, Eamon Coleman years ago, and um, then he trained it himself on his own standalone. Then he was with Leitrim for a couple of years. Loved Leitrim. Yeah. Um, I suppose that's the thing about football. We've been involved in football. We've been on the road with county. Like I was training with club teams in Longford when I was 10 or 11 senior teams. Um, so it's just an aid. It's what we do. It's, it's, it's the environment that we enjoy. Gary uh, won a championship with Gary Castle as manager, but Gary's somebody that's probably, he's my brother, best friend. He's a mentor. He's a t- somebody I go to a lot, lean on a lot. Like, but um, as it stands, to be kind no of more official, of a, no official, no role. official capacity. Right, just okay. I'm sure at the dinner table they have plenty of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may get used to that, Desi. I think you'll be meeting plenty of people who have opinions and uh, have a bit of advice for you. On hey, how best I worked to in commentary in RT. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, De- there's none of us too worried about you, Decky, De- Desi. Um, De- to the untrained eye, you might seem to have that thicker skin, but we we all know now that you're uh, you're made of stern stuff and no better man for intercounty management. Um, Thanks very much for joining us, Desi. Anyway, I guess you probably you have to head off now and start pleading with clubs to let you use their pitch and dig it up for them in December. So you probably uh, got some calls to make. I have to say, like I've got great support within the county already. So I just look forward to building on that. And always a pleasure talking to you, lads. And and Des, just in case I get accused of any favoritism against Mayo, if you do need a pitch, uh, if you're stuck <laughs> for somebody for a game behind closed doors and you're playing any team from Ulster. I know somebody who may know someone who may be able to source one fire and it's a very good quality surface. So I know you won't ch- let me that. <laughs> and I, I, won't, I won't name names, but thanks, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, yeah. Desi. Nice one, lads. Nice. Nice. Later. Good, good bye, luck, bye. Desi. Good luck. Thanks, lads. Jeez, Roy, we're gonna to have to start charging you advertising rates if you uh, keep yeah. um if you try to sell keep trying to sell St. Pat's pitch on here. No, it's just in case anybody was thinking, Jesus, oh yeah, he's looking after Kevin and he's not looking after anyone else, you know. <laughs> um so Niall, I, it, it's not a great surprise. And it after the kind of few headlines we've had and kind of it's a topic we'll, we're gonna to touch on it a bit, it is kind of nice to see a young man kind of getting into the intercounty game after after Ushim because we were beginning to get a bit concerned that it was it was becoming a, a game for retired men or people of independent wealth yeah and the way they had done it's the way you do it uh a bit of speculation then a couple of hours later bang they're appointed these uh six week drawn out processes are just uh 
that that's an old story. Yeah, the dream. Yeah, I like these sort of. It's just it's mooted and then it's done. That's the way to move forward. But no, here fair play to him. Fair play to him is great. Like he's obviously so enthusiastic there. You can you can sense it so much and he'll bring a lot of energy to it now and, and all the best to him. Westmead are in a very good position there after what happened last year. Mm. Yeah, team to build on that. Yeah, he's got, and he's got and he's got some great raw materials to work with. I mean, he's a very very good panel of players, and mm. there are, there are some very good achievable goals for him. I mean, what does success look like? That's kind of a difficult question to ask on the basis of what happened last year. But at the same time, I mean, I'm sure, and uh, you know, there are definitely some short term things. And like as I said, like it's like a Ronan O'Toole and these guys, they're they, they're the top class players, and I think they have um. Like it's a it's a good. I mean, I I was reading a, an article with Pat Spillane recently, and he said if there was one county outside Kerry yeah. he'd like to take on, yeah. it would be Westmead. So yeah. there you go. And, and, and the thing is, like everyone's like, oh, these teams have to close the gap on Dublin, but it's probably not. What the, the, they need to track a team, and I, I'll use say Armagh for an example. Like a couple of years, Armagh and Westmead, there a couple of years ago with brilliant battles in the qualifiers, and Armagh just went from Division Three, dropped to Division One there. They've stayed there for a couple of years uh, and they're looking like they're sort of not contenders, but a decent side. That's the sort of, they sort of have to, those teams sort of have to track that sort of side. Rather than this talk about closing the gap in Dublin, have to look like a team or a man who's of a similar sort of standard a couple of years ago and see if they can match what they're doing. So here's mm-hmm. hoping. Yeah, well, and, and, he, and he has huge experience, Mikey. I mean, I, I spoke to Desi before about, you know, the the nature of his football career. And he said, look, I played pretty much in everything. Interprovincials, when they existed, minor. He is an All-Ireland under 21 medal. Um, he's played in divisions four, three, two, one, and then back down to two, three, and four. Like he's been promoted and relegated. He's He's been in All-Ireland, you know, Leinster finals. Like he's... He's got a huge body of experience behind him at nearly every level of the game. And, and he's also, managed the school golf team. And he's a secondary school teacher. So he's and he's pretty up close and personal with a lot of young lads. So I think he's uh I think he's a great choice in a lot of ways. And I think he could be quite successful. Yeah. I, I think he touched on it there too about Oshin talking about Wicklow all of a sudden having a tangible uh target now at the Tatchland Cup. And again, of course, there'll be outsiders for it, but to see it as something they can compete well. And, and I think that competition will look back in 2022 in the Tashin Cup as being a major moment in the GEA because all of a sudden you had 10, 12 teams that were playing for nothing essentially apart from the league. Now they have something that they can enjoy in championship football. And that goes back to the teams buying in last year. Uh, the managers, the majority of managers, I should say, talking so positively from the first day like for so many people, they were predicting another All Ireland big competition. Teams would be pulling out, wouldn't be taken seriously. Teams took it serious. Fans came out. We saw the Westmead fans. We saw the Cavan fans in particular as well. The numbers they brought. Suddenly, the championship chain has changed for a lot of counties on the back of 2022 for me. Um, and and it all comes down to tangible success. He, he used the word tangible, and that's that's perfect. Yeah. So well, well we we've moved naturally onto championship structures, which is always a risk whenever we we, we talk I, about I, GA. And just 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 to counterbalance, Niall, I'd be I'd still have my skepticism. I'd still share a degree of skepticism around the Talchon Cup. I think it's a fantastic competition if if there's a spread of teams around that because it look it's kind of feels like this competition that teams or trying to develop and win but if you end up in a scenario like the joe mcdonough where you get a yo-yo team goes down wins it comes back up goes down wins it comes back up novelty will wear off fairly quickly i would imagine but anyway yeah. look i think it's very early to call but sure. yeah. and, and, and we and we all hope obviously that it is a success mm. so next year obviously the Delta cup remains and we have the new round robin series and now, you know, it's being uh, judiciously leaked by Crow Park ahead of a, a meeting this weekend where they're going to decide whether or not to do this. So we we'll to see what way the wind blows, I suppose. Um, so that they're going to extend the season by a week, Niall, and they're going to um, going to play the two hurling provincial finals on the same day. A um, couple of bits that will probably stick in people's craw is they're making a little bit more room, but they're still only going to be a week between the two All-Ireland finals. And the thing that gets me, I have no great, I have no skin in the game when it comes to football league finals. I don't think they're huge occasions. I think the division four and three ones kind of can be a bit of a novelty and clubs get, uh, teams get to play in Crow Park who don't often get to division two and one often can be a little bit of shadow boxing depending on who's on it, in it. So they're scrapping them. To me, 
I think, ho hum, let's see what happens. But they're scrapping the football final and they're keeping the hurling finals after we've seen that, you know, the hurling league has become, I know it's in two two conferences or whatever, but the hurling league has become like a preseason competition all intents and purposes. So they're they're kind of denuding the football league and kind of keeping the hurling league as it is, which seems a little bit arseways, but I guess they're kind of doing it to try and make room for football in the calendar. Yeah, and as you say, the football league has been getting stronger and stronger. It's just turning into a real elite competition and then the, to take the finals away, you see, it maybe dilutes it. Uh, personally, I'm of the opinion seven games is enough to um, crown a champion. Like, you know, if you're top of the league after seven games... That's what if three enough. teams? What if three teams finish level on points, played in at a time of the year where all the games are being played under different types of weather conditions and different types of pitches and different types of environments at different times of the day? It's not a very equi competition in terms of how it's run over its round round. Plus, it's not ages. home and away, and it's not home and away. And then you get to the end of it, and there are three teams all on eight points or 10 points and you're deciding a champion then based on the scoring average between the three teams I don't know I, I think it, I, I, I'm just wondering that, and that, that could easily happen especially yeah, with the competitive yeah. nature of Division 1 now I just wonder like I mean look I understand the sentiment behind it and there are issues around it but you like it's like in Dublin they're looking to change the leagues in Dublin right the, the county leagues And I can, again, understand the reasons why. 15 league games in Dublin is a lot, right? Especially for dual clubs, because that's 30 league games, and then you might have six championship matches on top of that, right? But the leagues in Dublin are the envy of the whole country. The the football leagues at, at county level are the, are the are, to my mind, arguably the best competition that you have. And there is an element of this for me, is like you're trying to fix something that isn't really broken. I mean dangerous and plus there's a financial aspect to this too that's very risky i mean i look back at the attendances for the last 10 years when i saw this and your average attendance is about 40 between 40 and 45 000 people you multiply that by 20 euro that's not insignificant money no no yeah i think that's for well, it's for a point there actually about the teams finishing i suppose you, you can relegate teams on similar things as well rory so i suppose it's true but it's good uh, for the goose <laughs> yeah but I, the, the one thing that would is a bit annoying about it. Like we look at Leitrim a couple of years going to play a Derry in the final and how big of an occasion it is. And it's probably what you were touching mm. on there, Mikey, maybe for the division three and four teams that don't get those outings in Crow Park. And listen, again, Wicklow might be pushing for promotion on the Campbell if things go well and, you know, getting a big day out. Leitrim had it there, different teams having that day out. So maybe for the division and three, four teams, it's a, uh, it's for me. It's a bit of a bit of an annoying thing. They won't get the day out, but mm-hmm. listen, I, I don't know how much of an impact it'll, it'll actually have on things. Like as you say, what season's going to be back by an extra week? It's, uh, it's mm-hmm. not going to make much of a muchness. Not, no, not exactly. uh, what, what, what I think what will get a certain cohort uh, up on their hind legs now, Rory, will be the idea of playing the two hurling finals on the same day. Mm-hmm. As we know, hurling is a sport that is, div- you know, is robbed of oxygen and has very, <laughs> very few show pieces. Mm-hmm. Some of our pundits have been known to mention before. And now the two main show pieces below the all Ireland final show piece are going to be run off on the same day. So- which again, which, which again, I mean, look at the uh, Leinster final this year. Um, I know it was a Saturday night. I know it was played at a time of the year when there was a lot of other stuff going on. Was that the game that was played before the memorable handshake? Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the that second handshake, handshake, handshake yeah. part two. Yeah. Handshake yeah, part two, handshake yeah. Part oh, yeah, two. I forgot there was a game of hurling before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, there was, I, I don't know, did, it, did the crowd break 25,000 for that? For that? It, it was, was, oh, it was so dead. It, it, was, it was pretty small. So what you're now doing is you're putting the two marquee fixtures on the hurt excuse me, on the hurling calendar outside the All-Ireland final in direct competition with each other, which could affect your tendencies even further. Now, you're dependent then, really, and you're hoping that you're going to fluke Wexford, make it to a final. But sure, that's not going to happen every year as much as we might all Half like the team see. are going to Australia as well, so it's really not going to yeah, happen next you know, year. Um, but, but, but you mentioned there that it'll have hurling people up in arms, Mikey. I don't know, will it? I think the hurling fraternity, by and large, they're quite clannish, cliquish, and they'll all stick together and they'll talk up their sport. But they're a pretty docile bunch, by and large. They'll kind of just do what they're told, ultimately. If, if, if there was genuine rancor and there was genuine um, upset and 
uh, radicalism within hurling, they wouldn't have accepted his calendar in the first place. You know what yeah. I mean? So I don't know if it's going to, uh, you know, people probably have a whinge here in the odd newspaper article, but it won't make much of a difference. The decision will be made and they'll just accept it. And that's the unfortunate aspect. Yeah. And Niall, um, you kind of, the old saying is, you know, the GA moves slowly, slowly, slowly until it moves really quickly. Um, we're kind of going away from that now. There's, I think people are going to start getting very irritated soon with the rate of change, the amount of change, the fact things are being trialed, trials are being thrown away. People want change, but I don't think anybody wants change for change's sake. And I th- there's a lot of upset and frustration aimed at RTE, partly because some pundits said they didn't like the split season that ran in 2022. And people have been saying, well, you at least let it finish before you judge it, which I, I don't think is an unfair um, point of view at all. I think let the club season, let 2022 finish before you judge it. Here we have the GA already tweaking their new 2023 calendar before 2022 is finished. And because they know, any, because they know, they know. They yeah. Know. But I think, but Niall, I don't think any of us also think this is going to be the final tweak to the GA calendar in the next three or four years. It is, it's getting to the point now where it, it's getting hard for the casual fan to follow uh competition structures and things and it's probably getting hard for people like desi dolan to plan um and it just it almost feels like we just need to settle for a year or two just chill but, out at this stage. And, and, and and mikey sorry just to cut across in before niall there's a huge huge problem at under 17 and under 19 level an absolutely massive issue there which we were told was going to be resolved with a special congress in this month which then didn't happen because they're they're still not sure what the right way forward on that, even though half the country or certainly most of the country is feels that the correct, um, the correct pathway would be just to go back to the way things were at minor and under 21. But like, you know, like, so the, the, anyway, sorry, sorry, Niall. No, you know, I, I totally understand frustration. That's actually one of the big frustrations probably around the, the country, Rory. And it's very, it's very hard, obviously, to, underage structures it's always a wee bit sort of gets lost in the mud a bit but I know those on the ground working with it there's a lot of concern over those age groups yeah. uh, Mikey you said the casual fans struggling to keep up you know we're, we're meant to be professionally keeping on top of this and I, I'm lost <laughs> yeah. and it, it's going to come to maybe March 2023 where I'll probably Google and go what is the actual final structure for the year because yeah. Are there hurling finals in the league? Is there football? I can't remember. You know, it's, it's getting to that point now where uh, yeah, you could say things are a bit staid, but staid uh, at least not, is dependable. An awful lot of tweaking, like, you know, and it's just... Well, the more... calendar, look, look the, 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 these tweaks are basically as a result of the calendar being too tight, right? It, yeah. So, so what's happening now is the tail is wagging the dog. And what you're doing now is you're cutting your nose off just to, you know, it's like... You're shrinking your main cash cow. Let's be honest, there is no, like the intercounty scene, whether we like it or supporters like it or club players like it or the GPA or the CPA or whatever you have in yourself, whether anybody likes it, the main cash cow for the Gaelic Athletic Association is the intercounty, is the intercounty scene. And there are moves to shrink that now even further, which means you're going to shrink the financial revenue streams you have even further which has knock-on effects for all sorts of capital projects and all sorts of uh club club development schemes all sorts of um the games development officers all the types of things that the gaa probably would have relied on to fund is now going to be affected in the long term there were six key uh, six key points made in the 2019 financial report by Jermall Ryan, which was part of Tom Ryan's report. It was the last one pre-COVID. That was the redevelopment of Casement Park, which, as we know, has been blocked for a whole myriad of issues. There was Newbridge, which is St. Connets Park, which needed um, an upgrade. There was Waterford Walsh Park, which has had some works done to it, but is still way off where it needs to be. Parky Cueve needed some servicing. Um, there was the development in Clonliffe College, and the last one escapes me, right? Because off the top of my head, I'd imagine none of those, none of those capital projects have seen any development since then because your revenue streams are falling 
as a result of you shrinking your main cash cow. This is what it all comes back to. And now the, there's a decision to say, right, we're going to take league finals out, which could be anything up to 800 grand to a million a year, you know, that you're now going to rip out of your, um, rip out of your balance sheet as well. Mm. <laughs> good, good luck, lads. Uh, I know there is the, the feeling that RT were very like, you know, pushing this split season for the county save it, but I had a great August. I had a great August. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you still got the tan. I still have the tan. You know. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 thing is, I, I didn't really see much of a change in the club championships. I didn't really see yeah, exactly. club championships an our man down and up around here in Ulster. They didn't really start that much earlier. And in some cases, I don't think they even did start earlier. Has Tyrone even started? Is Tyrone tonight? Duncan starting tonight. tonight. What day yeah. should we like? Like, which I'd imagine if you went back last year would be pretty much the exact same. Monaghan and Donegal were early, but they always start early. Yeah. So I haven't seen anything really change. And it just felt like there was a gap where we were killing time. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, for the record, um, anybody who doesn't know, well, Niall McCoy does work for RT. He also works for Gaelic Life. And if there is a newspaper in Ireland that devotes more covers <laughs> to Club GA than Gaelic Life, I'm yet to see it. So <laughs> Niall is not talking here as some uh, county-centric RTE man. He, um, yeah, exactly. Niall's income relies on Ulster Club GAA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be out of a job if I was pushing that. The angle here, yeah. <laughs> of every grade, every level, but so. And if you're not I, seeing a difference, you'd know better than me or even Rory. If there was, I, and if there's no noticeable difference up north, it's the same across the country. The thing is, like you know, if it's stretched out a few weeks, and I, I, I do agree that it could have been tightened. I don't disagree at that. Like, but you're still only going to impact in a couple of counties. Like, in it within those counties, there's always a. An acceptance that if your team gets to an All Ireland semi final or final, there's going to be a knock on them. Yeah. But yeah. It, just, anyway. it just it just felt a bit bizarre. And yeah. as as Mike alluded to, her, I, I'm all about the club. I love the <laughs> club. I die for the club. Mm. But it just it just felt like wasted time there. It felt like we were just ticking over until like there's no I can't apart from near me the loud seniors are into the semi final stage. Like there's no other county championship. Monaghan as well. Sorry, the rest are all still at that. You know, quarter final group. You know, nothing's. Yeah. We're in. We're in. Like we're late September, and the club championships. Nothing's near conclusion yeah. in a lot of counties. So, what's actually happened? What's changed? Just um to to change the subject, uh, Rory. Mm. Uh, seeing as you mentioned age grades, you like this. We had a um, we played a challenge match um against a club called Nakanana, who are from Central Wicklow, shall we say, not too far from uh, Ockram, and. Uh, we were a bit short in players, so we decided to bring up a couple of lads from minor who'd be going to senior next year because that's the jump from, you know, you know, under 17 to, to, to junior B is kind of is kind of the route now because that's the way things are. And it's a big jump. It is. The lads are grand. Jesus Christ, they should be on the team before me, put it that way. It's great playing with young lads who are actually running when you have the yeah. ball. Um, but what made it funny was we had 17 year olds playing for us who would be playing junior B next year. The age of the guy playing in goal for Nakanana. 62 years of age ah good man and he good wasn't man. he was pretty good as he used to play and go for wicklow his name escapes me now he was 62 and i was playing corner forward and i got a good look at him he's decent and he's 62 and he's playing against 17 year olds and maybe 16 year olds <laughs> sure we were knocked out of the championship on sunday last there by vincent's and look i mean i think vincent's championship position was a false one anyway to, to be honest they should, probably shouldn't have been in senior two in dublin but um and i think they'll win this championship you know, pretty comfortably in the end. Sylvester's a Malahide might give him a game, depends. Um, but we played and Masley Quinn, I mean, 42 years of age, like, you know, to be still playing at that level, to be still playing as well as he is, to it's it's some achievement now, all the same. When you see lads that are still able to dig it out, like I mean, if I walk up the stairs, I'm out of breath at this stage. Like so, you know, I just <laughs> Cole, think Cole Keeney as like, well for Bally Bowden there. As yeah, well. incredible, incredible, yeah. incredible. Um, before we finish up, lads, um, I was going to talk about ma the managerial appointments, but I think Monaghan's probably going to be sort of deceived, and and we could come back and chat about the Donegal one in January. I'd say and it still won't be done, so I think we might leave that for another week. But before we go, we haven't had a chance to discuss this. The um. The Limerick training jersey, lads. This is uh, this is about the only thing going on in hurling at the moment. Um, I don't know what you thought about this. That uh, the team, you know, bankrolled to an extent by one of the richest men in Ireland, are um, you know, putting up for sale a special uh, training jersey for next year, where uh, 
for the princely sum of 150 euros you can have your name uh added to the jersey design um to fund the team holiday um so niall i think the jersey is now 100 euros because the initial reaction wasn't fantastic and and taking jp mcmanus out of it because who knows what his arrangement is with and what he agrees to fund and i'm not saying the man should have uh, just be throwing money at limerick hurling all the time there's a isn't there a grant from the gaa towards the holiday and limerick would be a pretty big and successful what? uh you know county board this, this this just seemed odd to me yeah it's funny you said that actually and the, the figure of 80 grand i think it's been bandied about and i haven't checked it officially but i went back on just before we come on and read uh, the statement limerick put out when they are um announcing the price reduction to 100 euro and they said uh, they made a clear in the statement that limerick county board were responsible for the entire uh price of the trip so i was like that seemed a bit strange because i think there seemed to be some suggestion that they were given a grant so i don't know what the exact thing in that but listen um 150 euro ah, there's probably not much explanation needed it was a bad misjudgment of the times like in limerick or, you know, I can understand why you could trade it because you're never going to have more investment in the Limerick Hurling team. We're talking about a team that's done absolutely everything. It's going to be considered one of the greatest teams ever. And you see the backlash, even Limerick doing it. They're back in the Celtic Tiger when teams were winning all Ireland, they're selling every sort of tap they could, water bottles, anything they could get rid of. But we just live in different times now. We live in different times now. 150 euro for a piece of clothing and I know there's other couple of wee bits came with it it's just not realistic 100 euro is still pricing out a large part of your market there and I do realise that it's a fundraiser so once you take the cost price out of it you still have to be coming home with money to pay for the holiday but I, I just thought it was a misjudgment I just thought it was a big misjudgment and the one thing I would say though in in in, in, in all teams defence on those team holidays because I remember when Cork won the All-Ireland in 2010 I had a chat with Conor Coonahan afterwards and um, uh, we were doing just something at the end of the year and they were trying to get, you know, money together and Croke Park do make a contribution. It's pretty small. It's not, 80 grand, it's not 80 grand then, no? I think it, it might be in the, re it was certainly in the region of about 40, maybe 40 or 50. I don't know if it was any much more than that because they were having to do massive amounts of fundraising and as he said himself, he goes, it's a lot easier when you win, Rory. Um, like as opposed to when you lose because you do still the lads still feel they should be going on a holiday even the years that they get beaten in All-Ireland Finals which sounds a lot in Cork but um, like he's and I so I was asking him I said just in terms of the entire sum what are you talking and he said you wouldn't have much change out of a half a million and I was like what and he said like well look you're talking 30 players or maybe 30, well, one, not every player will go 30 players 30 partners wives and girlfriends yeah. Uh, boyfriends whatever and uh so that's 60 you might have your 10 backroom team if they can all go plus their wives and partners so now you're up to 80 you might have four or five county board officials and you might have four or five sponsors all with wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and, and husbands etc as well so there's your party of 100 and you split that into half a million that's five grand each between accommodation flights if you're going to the places like south africa and mexico and australia and thailand that's not a lot it's not a lot, five grand per person. And they generally would try and give the players a few quid to spend as well, because in fairness, they don't get much else in terms of uh, remuneration for playing into county football and hurling. Mm. So I do think they, there's a responsibility, I suppose, on teams to try and come up with ways to raise funds. So I'd have no issue with Limerick on that front. In fact, actually, I think a couple of years ago, I could, correct me, could stand corrected on this. Jim Gavin was re almost refusing to speak to us at an All-Stars gig because he was so disappointed with the contribution the GAA made to the Dublin Holiday Fund on the back of two, a replayed All-Ireland football final, which was basically, <laughs> you know, for several another holidays. five million, I think, <laughs> like, you know, so and and um, so it can be a sore point for county boards and a sore point for management teams. And it's a heap of money for teams to be raising. It's not... It's not that easy, not as easy as people think. So if they can come up with novel ways to try and do what you'd say, fair play. But yeah, I suppose maybe they just got their price point wrong on that one. I, I think, you know, if you got change out of half a million, you're probably doing well there. To be doing honest. well, you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, you're doing I, I, well. I, I, I've done a wee bit of math there and I was thinking 150 plus people you'd expect um, mm. 
you know, so as you say, and they went to Barbados last time, not 100% where they're going this time. Like, you know, it's it's not yeah. a weekend in Bundor, like, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Or they're not uh, going down to Lanzarote or no, you know, Ibiza. No. Or, well, it probably yeah. depends on how many shirts yeah. they shift. They could be, they could be going to Bally <laughs> yeah. It's a balancing act, like, you know, it's a balancing act. I think, you know, once you see it, like, they're very right to fundraise there, and there is a big, big, obviously, a big uh, deficit there to make up. But just, and I and, and that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and as you said, is, and, and, and as you said as well, like it isn't an open checkbook from JP McManus either. So they probably do. I mean, you know, look, they do have to raise something themselves. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, now. maybe maybe it was a novel. Like, like there was a novel element to it. I think the hundred and fifty euros probably was what made most people raise their eyebrows. As you say, Niall, the, to use the to, to use the marketing term, the price point probably wasn't quite right. <laughs> If I had it done, it probably for say a 99 euro with that on to the start, it probably wouldn't have made much of a story like in the first place. So if I hadn't had to come back there, anyways, you know, because mm. if you go into the shop and buy a, a normal jersey now, it's you know, yourself, lads, it's, it's not exactly cheap. Like gear, gear's not cheap, it's like everything is getting quite there. I know. I was trying, I was, I was contemplating buying a Wicklow jersey for my uh, one of my nephews, kind of as a joke because his dad's a big Leinster rugby fan living in Wicklow. Um, yeah. But no joke for a three-year-old kid is worth 40 euros. I'm sorry, like 40 euros for a kid's GA jersey. Um, I had no idea. Uh, my kids won't be wearing any GA jerseys anyway, I'll tell you that. It's still cheaper than the soccer ones, in fairness, and the rugby yeah. ones. But, yeah. you know, they are certainly getting pricey. Santa will be under pressure this year. <laughs> um, and then finally, Les, just before we go, Niall, um, Jack McCaffrey, Paul Mannion, um, you know, Desi's pulled off. A, a good early season win for him, or preseason win for himself here, and uh, it probably do, it probably does move the market. I don't know. I don't look at, uh, but at betting odds, certainly not this time of year. But the Dubs probably could be moved up to favourite in for the All Ireland betting on the strength of the two of these guys coming back. I'd say they probably are, and the thing is, they're twenty eight and they're twenty nine, and uh, Rory touching it there about players playing on, and you know to their age the. The retirement age is going up and up because these boys just take such good care of themselves now. Like so, you know, depending on when they stay or not, you could see both those boys playing until they're 35, 36. So that could be potentially six or seven seasons with two absolute superstars. Like Mannion's just an absolute gem. And we all know what Jack McCaffrey could do. So at top top level sports, it's like everything, top level sports, fine margins. And you know, we saw that in the Dublin Carry with the Sean O'Shea free kick, like. These, a lot of these matches go off and come down to one kick of a ball and there if you have Mannion and McCaffrey and if you had a call that day it could have been the difference like you put those three in and you wouldn't back against Dublin winning that semi-final so yeah listen when 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 it's so tight and you know for many years Dublin were that far ahead but there does seem to be a real sort of tight core group now that could be the difference so huge absolutely huge for them. Rory you're the um you're our, our, our Dublin club correspondent even um Billy McMahon, before the two lads came back, he did an interview with Owen Ryan on the website and he was kind of saying how uh, he said, oh, it'd be great if they came back. He said, Mannion's playing brilliantly for Kilmacott. He said, I haven't seen Jack playing, but like I would imagine he would obviously add something. It, has he been playing for Clantyre for the last couple of years? Has he been playing club football? Championship only, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if he's tagged out too many times in the league because I think mm. there was a commute involved. He was based down the country for a bit there as a paediatrician. So mm. um, I don't know. I like, But look, he's a very committed Clontarf man. I know he played in the uh, relegation game with Rohini at the weekend, mm -hmm. which they lost. Um, so they're gone, down, they're gone out of senior one, back down to senior two. Um, but apparently Brian Howard was in incredible form on that in that and obviously when you have the likes of Brian Howard and Brian Fenton, Brian Fenton as your midfield pairing at club level it's it's quite a forceful yeah. Yeah. it's quite a forceful pairing to have I wonder level. what their tactic is <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, so Rahini stayed up quite comfortably in fairness um, I think look I think and as well just to echo exactly what now I said, look, it strengthens their hand in a big way. I think another big thing is the Dublin scene is pretty much grinding to a halt now. There's nothing left really from here. Like I had loads of lads in within from our club asking, can we can they go off and play soccer for the rest, you know, for, for the next four or five months? Because there's nothing for them to do. Um 
but they yeah sort of so, sorry why do they have to ask your permission to go play well soccer? well it's just on the basis if they get injured and if they're saying look if i get injured and you know what can i claim on the injury scheme and i said well if you're playing soccer no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, short answer <laughs> yeah yeah so so that's that's so so they were just they were just querying it really or would it be frowned upon i said sure look look the, We've G- in GA land we've nothing to offer you so why wouldn't you go play soccer for the next four or five months um, but I think from a to go back to the point I suppose really it's fantastic from the inter-county players now because they're all now really in shutdown mode and I think that's very important from a Dublin perspective given the age profile of some of their key players like James McCarthy even Conor Callaghan probably got no real break for an awful long time um, Mick Fitzsimons as we saw again lion, lion, lion-like performance again at the weekend and you have you know, Johnny Cooper, you know, good few lads there. And even the two lads that are coming back, I think they've got a nice little breather now over the next four months to kind of get themselves sorted. And I think it makes Dublin unbelievably dangerous going into 23. Yeah, I think so too. Sorry, it's, it's like, if you wanted that, if any county wanted to add two players, you know, wh- whatever county it was, if you just say to them, Jack McCaffrey and Paul Mannion, you'd, you'd probably be pretty close to the two players any county you would want, you know, um, the original. Yes. Yeah, skill, energy, everything, and good yeah. and good vibes. And how, how, ref- how refreshed are they going to be now? They got to go and have a couple of years. You know, Jack was obviously doing work overseas, and Paul, I think he was out in America there. So they've got to live their lives a bit as well, away from that microscope. So how refreshed are they going to be coming back in? Like you know, they're yeah. they're at the start of a new journey again, rather than having played for seven or eight years every year. Now they're coming back in fresh as daisies. So. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we're, 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 uh, all de- we're all delighted for them. It's uh, been a tough couple of years for Dublin. It's been a tough couple of years. <laughs> 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 two, the two, could be over. <laughs> yes, it could be. We shall leave it there. Um, we will be back uh, next week. This weekend, you'll be able to keep across some of the club action on radio Saturday and Sunday Sport. And uh, Saturday evening, I do believe there's a Tipperary hurling quarter final. Drum and inch, drum and inch, Lockmore, Castellani, quarter to four. Yep. That's yep. it. Yep. Thank you very much. I was, I was about to try and stumble through the two teams, which I did read earlier. I couldn't remember. Thank you, Rory. Um, so me and Rory will be back with you next week, by which time you never know, maybe Ross Common, Monaghan, Donegal will have a new manager. Maybe not. Um, but anyway, we'll chat to you then. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good week. by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it! He hits it! What? It's over the bar! Oh! Holy Moses! <laughs> <laughs>